Yeah, so what are the magic words here? Melissa Mia Shiro and Blue Planet Foundation. Those are the magic words here on Think Tech in the three o'clock block on a given Wednesday. And you can see her, there she is. Melissa, welcome yeah. to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy our, our chats and our conversations today. Yeah, the same, the same, the same. So, um, you know, you've been elevated. You're the executive director of Blue Planet Foundation. The first order of business is a big congratulations to you. You're, you're, you know, it, it's confirmed now. You're a major player in energy and in, in, you know, nonprofit eleemosynary energy. So good for you, Melissa. How do you feel about it? I feel really excited. Um, it's great. I, I love the organization. I've been fortunate enough to be with Blue Planet since 2014. So I've got a great head start with the team um, and being really familiar with the energy landscape in Hawaii and also the work that we're doing at Blue Planet Foundation. So it feels just really exciting. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the road ahead. Yeah, okay, we're going to examine that with you today. Right. But first, what is Blue Planet Foundation? What's its history? What's its mission? <clears throat> what are its current activities? Yeah, great, great question. And um, it's also interesting because many people get us confused because there are so many Blue Planets out, out there, right? There's other entities, there's a battery business, there's a surf shop. Um, so Blue Planet Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. We were started 13 years ago right here in Honolulu and remain um, in, in Honolulu and offer programming statewide. And our focus is really on clearing the path for clean energy. So identifying what the barriers are standing in our way to get to that future. And then we work from a system standpoint to remove those barriers. A big piece of our work is in the policy space. So many people know us as strong policy advocates um, for various climate policies. We championed the 100% renewable energy law that was the first in the nation. And then over the years, we've also become known for our storytelling work. So we believe in the power of narrative and telling stories and, and using that to change the way people think about something like energy or think about the climate challenge. Give me a story, would you, Melissa? Any story will do. Yeah, any story. We have we have so many, and, and we really love to, to tell stories. So one of the initiatives I'm really excited about is our We Are 100 initiative. So this we're actually gathering stories from individuals and businesses from across the country, um, or sorry, across the state. Um, eventually, it'd be great to, to build those stories um, internationally, and we can talk a little bit about um, you know, how I see that evolving in my, my new role at Blue Planet Foundation. But we started with local stories and what we wanted to do with those stories is convey to the public that this journey to 100% clean energy, it's not just something that the utility worries about, it's something that includes all of us. And it's, it's not just about lights, it's about transportation. Um, so one of my favorite stories is this woman, Julie, who lives in Ebba Beach and she's been a bus rider for 30 years. So she works in Waikiki um, and, and through um, the We Are 100 campaign and also our Empowered TV series that we have um, going on right now, we, we tell stories like that. So, so she talks about you know, waking up early to get on the bus um, and the friends that she makes while riding the bus and how she feels good about minimizing her carbon footprint by taking the bus. Okay. Yeah. That's just I, and there one. are many more. So many. I know some of them myself. I know some of the stories that you have told. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, um, let's take a look at your website. We have your website ready to look at. And so maybe you could sort of step us through it. Um, that would be the homepage, but there's so much more. It's so well written and it's really beautiful. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah. And Doing work in Hawaii, um, we're lucky lucky to be blessed with that that beautiful imagery, and we, we really wanted to show through the website just how special this place is and how important it is that we protect it um, for future generations, and that we really see our beautiful island home as as the epicenter for global climate solutions. So you'll you'll see our our beautiful island home sprinkled throughout the website, um, and that's really you know that's our center of gravity, and that's what inspires okay, that work. Step us through it now. Um, Michael is going to take us wherever you want to go on this website. Yeah. So if when folks go to the homepage at blueplanetfoundation.org, 
and just kind of scroll through. That's a, a good place to kind of get a feel for um, for the type of work that we do. We have this this fun um, clicker to just give you a sense of um, uh, continuing. You know, it, this importing fossil fuels and this challenge is something that's ongoing, even as we're speaking. Right, we we are impacting the climate. So we just wanted to offer kind of a a fun visual there. And then the next section as you scroll down is really an overview of the types of work that we do as a nonprofit. So I mentioned our policy work. Um, we also do a lot of work in communities uh, related to energy efficiency. So energy efficiency is something that's often left out of the conversation about clean energy. People don't fully grasp what a central role it plays in helping us to get to a clean energy future. Um, and then we also do work with Hawaii youth and that area of our programming has really grown over the last few years and it's going to continue to grow in the future. So we're in classrooms, uh, educating students about clean energy, climate, energy efficiency, clean transportation, um, learning from them as well what they hope to see in the future. And then clean transportation. This has also been an area of program growth for Blue Planet as the electricity sector is making good progress um, on decarbonization, we have a long way to go on transportation. So it's, it's more of a focus. Yeah, um, I, I oops, there's more. Yeah, there, there's more. This is just a fun link to our platform called Island Pulse. Um, so this is uh, specific to the island of Oahu, but something we actually partnered with Hawaiian Electric on. It is a real-time energy tracker. Uh, letting people know how much energy we're using on the island of Oahu and how much of it is coming from fossil fuels or clean energy sources. So we just include that there so people, you know, it's, people want to have feedback, right? It's often this idea of climate, clean energy can be a little bit abstract. So we wanted to take it out of the, out of ab abstraction and make it real for folks. Um, and then I think if you scroll down um, some links to, to more of our impact and all the way at the bottom, um, we have a uh, link to some of our video work. So I mentioned that we're storytellers. We love to um, share stories of community members and then also use the power um, of video to, to tell new stories about climate change and how it's, it's that we're all part of this journey. So just some links to some fun video projects that we've done over the years. Nice, yeah. beautiful website. <clears throat> so uh, who, who funds you? You're a foundation, you're a 501c3. I guess for, for educational purposes, uh, are you a, a private foundation or a public foundation? And who, who's the bulk of your funding? Yeah, despite having foundation in our name, we're not a private foundation or a granting uh, foundation. So that can lead to all kinds of brand confusion. Um, so we are a public charity. So a majority of our funding comes from uh, donations and also grants. Uh, people may recognize our, our founder, Hank Rogers. So he, he founded the organization. He's a, a well-known and well-respected um, visionary in the community. So he launched the foundation and, and it was always his vision um, you know, for us to grow up and, and be independent. And that's where we are right now. So 80% um, of our operating budget um, comes from um, you know, non-founder sources. So we, we, we raised that funding through grant programs. Um, we have some um, partnerships with organizations like Hawaii Energy. And then we also um, receive donations from community members, from businesses that are concerned about climate, that are excited about using the lever of policy and storytelling to, to contribute the solution. Yeah, you've mentioned, uh, what, Hawaiian Electric and Hawaii Energy, uh, th and those are clearly important affiliations. Are there any others that fit in the affiliation category? There must be some, eh? Yeah, and, and we're always exploring um, new partnerships. And I think that the energy landscape has changed so much. So we're, we're always um, thinking about and open to having conversations um, with, uh, with new partners. Um, another key partner that comes to mind um, is Clearway. So they're a renewable energy a project developer, and we've partnered with them on some of our youth engagement activities. So um, they support our work in in going out to to communities and um, you know talking about clean energy, listening to um, you know students and, and what they think about these projects and how they potentially can um, develop career pathways um, in this arena. 
We're also um, looking at partnerships with, with labor unions. So IBEW um, is someone that we've, we've been talking to and wants to partner on, on programming. Um, and then we also have a recent partnership with Castle Foundation. Um, so funding work in, in the uh, climate education space, also thinking about this idea of, of storytelling and really analyzing um, the power of messages, uh, messages, and also messengers. So, who are the messengers that are really going to inspire all of us to be part of the clean energy future? I'm impressed with uh, your outreach. Uh, it, it has always been thus with uh, Blue Planet Foundation, as I recall. You know, you do a lot of outreach to reach people. <clears throat> but if I asked you, um, you know, when you reach out and you touch people, especially those kids out there, you know, who are the next generation, what is your message to them? What are, you, what are you trying to inculcate in their understanding of the world to come? Yeah, so we definitely try to provide educational resources that educate on, on climate science, um, on renewable energy technology, uh, but a large piece of it is really on em empowering them. So we, you know, have conversations with them and offer programming that helps them engage um, specifically with, you know, civic engagement. So getting them involved in the policymaking process uh, and, and really helping them to see that they're, um, you know, we're not only grooming future leaders, but they are, they are already leaders um, in this conversation. And they're the ones that are inheriting the consequences of the choices we're making today. So they have a lot of power. Uh, and have an opportunity to tell, uh, you know, business leaders to tell lawmakers that this is this is the future that they want to see. So we offer those those kind of advocacy tools, um, you know, information about about the climate science, so they have that grounding when they're when they're speaking to their peers, to lawmakers, etc. Yeah, you got them to spread the word. <clears throat> I yep. remember uh, going to a Blue Planet program. It was at St. Anthony's Church, and it was um, reuse, recycle. Uh, it, was, it was a play that Blue Planet mm. funded, and it was a bunch of elementary school kids that came from all over the island. <clears throat> it was a musical, and I remember how impressed I was that at the end, and you know, th these were professional actors and singers and it was it was a good play i enjoyed watching it you know uh, <clears throat> but at the end of it they all walked out these these, these elementary school age kids singing the song that had been sung during the play and i said they're taking that home and they're not only taking that home they're taking the whole thing about reuse recycle and other words um, and I said to myself, this is the way you change the future by influencing the kids and having them sing the song and bring the message home. That's got to be part of your thinking. Well, I know it, it was for that event years ago, but it's got to be part of your thinking now. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And all of that content brilliance credit goes to the Honolulu Theater for Youth. Um, so they had this idea of let's let's do this play for kids about clean energy uh, and just it, it was a fantastic show. And I remember us going as a Blue Planet team and sitting in the back row, you know, the kids got the front row seat, but we were in the back row and, and they were, you know, singing along, just as you said, it was it was it was pretty magical. Um, so that's precisely the type of, of programming and experience we want youth to have. And in recent years, we've been doing really focused work with high school students um, because they're they're really in a unique moment where they're you know they're the same excited. kids. They're the right. same kids. <laughs> That's an excellent point. Yeah, they are the same kids. Yeah. And now they're ready to yeah, more to influence policy. <laughs> well, let's talk about policy. So the policy is so important, and uh, indeed, I, you know, uh, I'll say that uh, the government needs our advice. They need our help on shaping policy, because the truth is that energy, as so many things in our world, are very complex. Energy points issues are very complex, and you really have to understand a lot in order to fashion policy. And you guys uh, do policy. And I, I like to know the, 
the four corners of your policy efforts, what you're supporting these days, where you want to take it, and how you're reaching the policy, quote, makers uh, that we have in state government and county government here. Yeah, there's always more work to do on policy. It's certainly, as you were describing, it's a, a powerful lever for driving this larger systems change that we're seeking, right? Because we're working on a really daunting challenge um, and individual behaviors are gonna help us uh, get to that future, but it's not the whole picture. And we really need this, these larger systems change changes to help us get there. Um, so Hawaii has some really great you know, goals and targets in place um, and even mandates for, you know, getting to 100% renewable energy. So, so there's a strong framework in place. I'd say recently, a lot of our policy work has shifted to focus more on the, the implementation. So I, I mentioned at the beginning how we see our mission is really, you know, clearing the path to that 100% clean energy future. So there are all kinds of uh, additional policy barriers that pop up um, as we're moving towards that path. And one area, um, I've, I've mentioned it before, and it's, it's worth repeating, one area that we're really focused on now is decarbonizing our transportation sector. So that's one area that Hawaii, it, it feels like we are a little bit behind from other places like California. Um, we have you know, more electric vehicles on our road. I think we're near 17,000. 17, um, so we, we've seen steady progress, but, but not nearly kind of the curve that we need to see. Um, and then similarly, things like charging infrastructure, particularly for those that don't and can't afford to live in a single family home to plug in their EV um, when, they get, when they get home or during the day when, when they're, the sun is shining and they're using solar. So thinking about those solutions, we have to, to expand the way that we're thinking about solutions so that we're including, including more residents in that future. Yeah, well, we, you know, uh, year, uh, years ago, uh, we did have a tax credit for electric vehicles and then, and then it somehow, um, somehow went away. Um, and uh, of course the government could incentivize cars, but also uh, charging stations. It could, you know, give tax breaks for charging stations. It could build the charging stations. It could incentivize companies to be formed to make the charging state, to build the charging stations as a as a profit, you know, operation. Um, and query, you know, what what are your favorite things, your favorite incentives, if you will, uh, to try to get the legislature to, you know, change change the uh, change the system to incentivize the community to buy more cars to build more charging stations and the like what what are the ways that that can be done and what are you uh, advocating yeah yeah picking my favorite incentive that's a tough one um but i'll try so there was actually a really great bill that passed um this past session it was introduced by um, Chair Lowen, who chairs the um, energy, the House Energy and Environmental Protection Committee. Um, so this was um, it, adding additional funding um, and additional legs to this this great rebate program that we already have in place. Um, it, it's not too old. It was first established in 2019, but it is a rebate that's offered for installing uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. And it's really aimed at, um, you know, not at the single family homes, but it's that, that public and that community charging network. And then also for apartment buildings. Um, so that, you know, people that live in apartment buildings have a little bit more confidence when they are going to buy a new vehicle and they, they can just have that confidence that an electric vehicle can work in, within their lifestyle. So that program, there's um, additional funding. It's actually funded um, through a portion of our existing barrel tax. Um, so it's not, not kind of a, a, something that was additional. It was just kind of a reallocation of funding that was, is already coming in. Um, so it makes sense to be, um, you know, paying for these things with, with our, our carbon pollution tax, essentially that's coming in. Um, yes, the way it should be. Yes, the way it should. Barrel tax should go to things like that. That was the original right. intention of it. Not the general fund, but things that will, you know, provide a fossil-free future for sure. Um, and I guess when you say rebate, you mean that if I put in um, a charging station in my condo, for example, 
And, and it cost me, I don't know what, a couple thousand dollars. The rebate would, would be a rebate of part of what I have spent. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's right. And it's, this program's administered by Hawaii Energy, which is a, a great partner for this program because they have so much experience with managing rebate programs. Um, so, so they have that set up in place. And then there's different, different um, tiers for the rebate. So there's a, um, for you know, upgrading, if you wanna upgrade um, to a different type of charger, um, that's available. Um, and also just for the installation of charging. So, it, so what's so the next step? What's the next ah, step, Melissa? The next step. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we have we have to we, we have no time to waste, you know, 20, 40 or 45, they're right on the, the horizon. And electric uh, cars, transportation is very important because that's, you know, billions of dollars of fossil fuel being used every every year in Hawaii. So um, what else can we do? Yeah, uh, something that we've been looking at is really like we have a goal on the transport or on the electricity side for 100 percent renewable electricity, we need something similar on the transportation side. Um, so that's what we're looking at. A number of, of um, states have been looking at uh, legislation to essentially phase out the sale of gasoline powered vehicles. Um, so that's something that we're that we're looking at here. Uh, a number of, of you know countries across the world have made a similar commitment. We do from last legislative session, um, a, a bill was passed to set a goal for state owned fleets uh, mm. to transition to zero emission vehicles. But from Blue Planet's perspective, we need to set that goal uh, economy wide um, because transportation um, is such a big piece of our, our emissions locally we see that as a, the next important step. In addition, and in parallel to, to really building out that charging network um, that can provide more people with access to charging, it can eventually support the electrical grid um, in this clean transportation future. So that's where we, we think we need to go. Got resistance on these things? Yeah, there's always resistance. Um, <laughs> this is a, it, it's a, a big transition. Uh, one of the bright spots is that manufacturers um, across the globe, auto manufacturers, are committing to transition uh, their, you know, entire production to electric vehicles. So they're really banking on this uh, electric vehicle future. Um, and so now it's making sure that that we we put the right, uh, you know, pillars in place to not just kind of let the market decide where things go because often that's when people get left behind right and we're not thinking about vulnerable pop vulnerable populations or you know people that maybe not, don't have access like we were talking about that having access to charging at home so we need to make sure that we're building a system that works for everybody absolutely democratization it's really it's important for so many reasons including um, you know, the, the social compact, uh, the, the belief, the confidence in government, you know, the confidence in the community. We really, we have an issue about that on the mainland, not so much Hawaii, but we have to, we have to make sure everybody feels confident. So um, I want to, I want to ask you um, about the, you know, the, um, I want to call it the general initiative of clean energy. You know, a few years ago, it was uh, all the rage. And the, the general notion was um, we need to have a diversified portfolio of everything we can get our hands on, everything that generates clean energy from, you know, the natural resources around us. Let's do it. I wouldn't say that's the case now. Uh, I would say it's um, largely solar. Uh, there's a little wind, but the wind is, you know, more historical than going forward. Um, and, uh, of course, there's geothermal, which is struggling in the big island in a couple of ways. Um, that I can't think of too many other sources of clean energy that are promising for the future. I mean, aside from those and especially uh, solar, solar energy. Um, so in, in a sense, the, the great energy behind energy, <laughs> community of energy pushing clean energy seems to be less enthusiastic or less organized these days. And I wanted your reaction on that. Ah, that that's that's really interesting. Um, you know, I think there's it's a combination of things. There are definitely um, kind of new new players in the conversation. So I think before and even when Blue Planet was founded, 
we were the only kind of clean energy nonprofit. Um, and it, it's really, it's in some ways, maybe not as focused of a conversation and there's not kind of that channeled energy by, you know, a, a maybe smaller group of really um, strong advocates. And it, at least from my perspective, feels kind of more um, spread out in, in conversations across different industries. So as we, you know, we have this goal for 100% clean energy, we're in the process of figuring out what's, what's the optimal way to get there. And, and now there are new, new conversations we're having um, and, and kind of new puzzles that we're trying to, to figure out. So I, I, I think it's more, um, maybe the energy is more kind of dispersed uh, across conversations. And that's something that, you know, as I am stepping into the executive director role at Blue Planet Foundation, I'm also really curious about from an organizational perspective. So Blue Planet uh, has been doing incredible work over the last 13 years. You know, now they're, it, it's a, a new conversation, a new energy landscape. You know, how can we evaluate our programs and our impact to, to really, you know, focus on a, a new area and, and rethink about where we need to go and where we can add value um, as a nonprofit in this space. Yeah, well put. So, um, you know, what, what I want to ask is, uh, given all of that, um, given the, the fact that you've been with, um, you know, Blue Planet Foundation for a while in various capacities, your last capacity is what? Chief of Staff, as I recall. Um, so, I mean, before becoming Executive Director, uh, you have seen this all evolve over really what amounts to a, 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 a decade, maybe even uh, kind of generation, I hate to use these energy words, a, a generation of energy, clean energy development in Hawaii. And here you are, handed, handed the keys to the kingdom, if you will, of a senior and very important organization in the energy landscape, the clean energy landscape, with the, the power, the credibility to speak volumes, to speak the power. Um, and uh, here you are. And here we are. And my and my last big question to you, Melissa, is what are you bringing to the table in new ideas, new directions, um, new new concepts? Uh, your administration, what is it going to be like? Yeah, I I'm I guess continuing to bring, and it's just in more sharpened focus, this sense of urgency. You know, this this really is the time. The alarm is sounding louder and louder on climate. We're reminded of that as world leaders get together next week at COP, at COP26. So I'm really thinking about, you know, this is the time, um, the clock is ticking. We, we really need to focus and be strategic about where we can make the most impact in the time that we have. I am also a, a lawyer by training. <laughs> Um, and I'm really proud of my ability and willingness and appreciation for collaboration. So I'm excited to have new conversations. I'm excited to bring more people into the conversation about climate and clean energy. And that's what's really driving me in this new role. Hmm. Conversations, like conversations here with us at Think that's Tank. Right. That's right. I, love I, hope, I hope we have those conversations and I hope you hope so too. Yes, I always enjoy them and, and happy to always happy to talk story. Thank you, Melissa Miyashiro, the relatively new executive director of Blue Planet Foundation for a new time, a new generation, new challenges in energy and, and clean energy in Hawaii. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. It was a pleasure. Same here. Aloha. Mm -hmm.